What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on my channel. I'm currently in Birmingham at the moment and the reason for that is because today I'm going to be training with a world-class coach. He works for Team GB, really, really grateful to get in with him. And like I said to you guys in episode one, he's going to help me improve on all the things that I want to work on in this off-season. My mobility, my strength and my speeds, the three main things. He's a, he's a specialist in this field, so really, really well-respected coach. I'm just outside the High Performance Centre in Birmingham at the minute, going to get in there now. He wants me to come up today and I'm going to be doing around four hours work with him. He's just going to analyse the way I move, identify any weaknesses that I've got, strengths and based on everything he sees today, he's going to formulate a, a, a six-week off-season programme for me. So. I'm going to get inside now, I'm going to try and video for you guys as much of the drills as possible, show you the sort of things that we do. Off the back of that, I'm going to get up here maybe twice a week with him and I'll show you guys exactly how I'm going to be training. So let's get inside now and uh, let's crack on. Okay, so completely flat, so let me have this one first, you pick it up to me. So basically, you you do nothing. You'll become like a dead weight, right? I do the work. So I'm, uh, as I push down against you, I feel where your ranges are. He's actually quite mobile. Yeah. yeah. My hamstrings are tight, so I did a lot of like high acceler like acceleration work on Sunday. So. Okay, push up against. Push your foot up. Toe it against my elbow. Oh, push okay. up. Push the elbow up. Come on, push it up against my elbow. Come on, and relax. Good man. Okay, now push up against my elbow and relax. Now push up and relax. I'm going to hold this one for five, four, three. Two, one, push up. And this is, you got a bonus stretch because, you know, you're from Iran. And relax, through your heel. Push against me, and relax. Pick me up through your heel. Push against me, come on, pick me up, come on. Well done. You're well put together for a football player. So this is a 90 degree. No, it's not, it's not too bad. Really? I feel like you could go further and then... Um... If it comes off, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one comes stiff, this one comes relaxed. And relax, good. I used, to I used to charge him £2.50 a play. £2.50? Your feet are good. They're good, yeah? Yeah, they're good. Most football players I've, I've worked with have got feet like old men. And tell me if you feel significantly looser. You've just done a session. Just move your feet around, move your groin around. Yeah, significantly. Significantly, right? Yeah. Okay, relax that palm. Relax yeah, yeah, the spirit. Push against me. <laughs> relax. Okay, now that's strong. Push against me. Three, two. Go there, and drop it forward, three, two, one. Good, take it up, bring the back, and take it in, and drop your head forward, three, two, one. And then the last one to the centre, breathe up from here. Take it forward, and the stretch goes there. Five, four, three, two, one. And quick feet, so quick feet, good boy. And now start to open up, be that tight. Now be a left foot. There you go, thank you, very nice. So I like we just fire the out, fire the out, fire the out, fire the out. Good. So what we want to do with you, forward, side, back, side, back, back, forward, step your neck, back, hold the forward players. Really good first session done. Took away some really, really good things from it. Um, 
very much different to how I usually train. A lot of rest in between reps because the quality of the movement has to be 100% every single rep that we do. Um, loads and loads and loads of benefits and things I can take away from this session. I think I've learned to move better in two hours of training with a world-class coach than I have for the last eight years or so in my, in my career. The, di the, the difference between the start of the session and the end of the session was huge, so really, really good. Just now I've got to practice all the movements two, three times a week and it becomes second nature. Transfer it onto the pitch and then I'll be flying. So get some food now, absolutely starving. Um, get back down south, another session this evening and then rest up for the day. What are you saying, man? How long did it take oh. you? Diff, you know, the traffic was mental. Love that whiteboard's already set up for me. Let's get the big hypertrophy session written up then. <laughs> Are you getting involved or what? I don't mind, yeah. <laughs> You got nervous. <laughs> Sweating more than a football game. Do you know what I'm buzzing about? I haven't got to change the weight. Mm. Worst part of gym. Where's the box, bro? You're holding the camera like you're ready to film. Not giving me any rest, no? <laughs> no. I think I am a machine. No rest, man. Deal racking that. No, 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 I don't even know what I'm saying. All out exertion. But to be fair, my heart rate right now is getting high really quickly because I'm not as fit as I would be in the season. So, what's the highest strain you've got before? The highest strain, my PB, I think it's been 19.1. Mm. Lockdown session, <laughs> last season in Hull. We got given our data every day and the boys are competing to see who would do the most strenuous workouts. Shock, I was top dog. I'll get home now, probably have a pizza, burnt 4,400 calories. Pizza, hey, why, are you, <laughs> why are you nibbling? <laughs> You're acting like my nutritionist. 
Super and I get you home. Can't be eating pizza. Tomorrow, it's either a gym session or another football session. Depends on how I feel in the morning. Uh, wake up. If I'm really domsy, I'm not going to be able to do another gym session tomorrow. So I'll make it football based. And yeah, that's me. Catch you guys in the morning. What, well, you're not going for another session? No. Nah. So much for hard work. <laughs> yeah, good one. 18.7 <laughs> strain. You've never seen that before in your life. Just checking my whoop score now. Is it Six good? It's all right. 61% recovery. Um, it's not bad to consider enough. I've not trained this heavily for a while, so. But look, we'll get into this now. A running session. First time I've run since uh, the end of the season. Do the football drill after that. Uh, stay on top of the technique. Bit of sharp stuff. I think I've got enough to get by, but we'll see, man. Got my bag, didn't I? Also, the first session in these new wheels. They better have me moving like Mo Farah in this session. I'm telling you that. Obviously, I haven't got a measuring tape, so I'm trying to get as close to 20 meters in between each cones, best I can. We need to go 20 back, 40 back, 60 back, 80 back, 100, and back down. What session are you doing? It's aerobic fitness, so. It's going to be around about four minutes on, two minutes off. Ho I'm hoping to get in in four minutes, but it's going to be a push because obviously I'm not as fit right now. And why I'm doing this as opposed to just running around a pitch loads of times is um, it incorporates turns. So it's more specific for football. I've got some big strides I have. Make it harder, right? Straight into the rest, two minutes, really quick to be fair. I'm happy with that. I can keep up that standard. I've had about 35 seconds rest now. Heart rate's still above 130. So over this off season, the quicker I can recover, essentially the fitter I'm getting. It's all right, five days off, we've not lost too much fitness. About three minutes 45 though for the first set, it's not bad. Last set was 402. <sighs> Body's in pieces now. You know what it is? It's the turns. The turns take it out of your quads. So they, my legs end up dying before my lungs. If I can get them times more consistent, like the first set, 345, second set, 350, and then 355. The quicker I can get it back down, the fitter I am basically, because if I went into another set, my heart rate. 160, 170, that's, that's when I'm going to start hitting brick walls and blowing up. What are we saying? 10 minute rest now, into football. Bring the heart rate down, just technique work. One touch left, 
two touch bounces, no bounces, hundreds of touches in them. I'm just checking the whoop de whoop. My strain today, 12.1 for, for the two sessions this afternoon. Not as high. Not too bad. Nah, not too bad. I'm either not putting it in enough or I'm getting fitter. You choose. You can see the little spikes in the graphs here. First block of four minutes where I rested, second block, rested, third block, and it goes to the last block. But to be fair, underneath it, it says optimal strain. So if I had to push myself you didn't anymore, work hard enough. Nah, nah, nah. if I had to push myself anymore, I was at a risk of getting injured. So it's all in the bank and you can see that like the spikes are even. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't really working that much harder as the session went on. Well, it proves that I'm, I've, I've maintained a lot of fitness um, over these last five days. I'm just walking back to mine from Waitrose, just getting a bit of dinner. I was gonna stop off on my way back from the training ground because I was absolutely starving. I was just gonna get something quick and easy, but I didn't want to get sucked into uh, the bad habits of eating unhealthily. I want to go back in tip-top shape, having built some lean muscle. That's my goal this off-season. So I don't want to form any bad habits of eating any junk foods. It's a slippery slope, that is. Um, you get sucked in once and you quickly find yourself piling on the pounds. Get on the size of this gaff next door to me. So I thought on my way back from Waitrose, I'll answer another one of your guys' questions. And I've got a good one here. It's from FF3. He asks, how do you prepare to peak mentally before each game or day? Do you use any techniques like visualization, mindfulness, or self-talk? So this is a brilliant question for me. At the start of my career, when I was 21, 22, if you had asked me back then, or said to me back then, Taff, you need to meditate. Honestly, I probably would have just started laughing. You're like, ha, meditate. Isn't that what them guys in the mountains do that start levitating with their eyes closed and legs crossed? But I remember I started speaking to a, a close friend of mine and he actually implemented it. And he said to me, Taff, you've got to try, you've got to try meditation. I was thinking, Bro, what are your miles off here? What do you mean meditate? And anyway, um, it was someone I trusted, so I took his word for it. And I started doing my own research on it. And I started seeing people like Michael Phelps, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, um, Conor McGregor, Muhammad Ali. They all use different forms of meditation, mindfulness, and um, self-talk, visualization, etc. And I remember, that's when I thought to myself, if these guys who are at the top of their sports 
I'm meditating. There's got to be something about it that's working, surely. So I um, started doing a bit more research and I saw an article on Conor McGregor. He said that um, the key to a lot of his success was the fact that he would visualise his fights before they happened. And then, and we all know how successful Conor McGregor's been. So I started reading up on visualisation techniques and I remember the first time I did it properly, this is no joke, um, we were playing Aston Villa away in the FA Cup. And um, the night before, two nights before, I had gone over in my head 75 to 100 times um, a corner coming in and me attacking it and scoring. And guess what? Next day, corners come in, John Terry was marking me, got across him and scored the winner, 2-1. Look. Some people might think it's a coincidence, but since then, I could not go into a game now without having visualized myself in the game the next day. So winning headers, tackles, blocking shots, defending crosses, making passes, scoring goals, everything you think of, I go through it so many times the night before a game, before training. What you're doing is you're preparing yourself and you're giving, you the best, you're giving yourself the best chance in having a good performance that day. One tip of mine though, one thing I would say when it comes to visualization is a lot of people will forget to visualize themselves doing things badly. And you might be thinking, why would I, why would I visualize myself making a mistake in a game or scoring an own goal, whatever it might be. And the reason you should visualize things going badly as well as going well is, um, so when it does come to game time and if you do make mistakes, which you inevitably will at some point, everyone does, you're able to react better to them because you prepared yourself beforehand. How many times do you see in a game when someone makes a mistake and then they're horrendous for the rest of the game? Um, but also on the flip side, they make a mistake and sometimes you see people going to have unbelievable games because of that mental strength, you know, they've probably prepared themselves mentally for bad situations and they're able to brush it off and uh, still have a good game. And when it comes to meditation, it's just as simple as taking a second or a moment to focus on your breath or an object. The way I like to do it is anytime my mind starts wandering, I bring it back to that anchor point and I've found that going into games, it really helps with that focus, you know, having that still mind if I make a mistake, it's not going to affect me because I'm able to come back to that focus quickly. If I do something well, like score a goal, um, I'm not going to get overexcited. I'm still going to maintain my focus. And you'll see in games, if things get heated with other players, fans, wherever it might be, you'll be able to take a second, gather your thoughts and act accordingly instead of like letting your emotions get the better of you. If any of you guys are looking to start any of these, make sure you start slowly one or two minute sessions a week. Build it up gradually. Don't just jump straight into it. Hour long sessions and burn yourself out mentally. Um, it won't be sustainable, it won't do you any good. And you'll slowly start to form habits by doing it once or twice a week, every week. And eventually you'll see really, really big improvements in your all round game. Mentally you'll become stronger on and off the pitch. You'll notice huge differences. But guys, listen, if you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. Get down in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see in the future. And in my next video, I'll actually be in Mykonos on a beach. So I'll see you guys then.